What's up guys? Welcome to the Darts Forever YouTube channel. I hope you're having a good day so far. So this video, I wanted to go through Q School and I wanted to talk about some of my ideas that I think could potentially improve Q School next year in 2024 when that comes around compared to this year that's just gone. Now this year that's just gone was a good Q School, but I have some ideas that I think could potentially make it a little bit better. Now if you guys have any similar ideas and you want to share them, then please write them in the comment section below. That would be amazing. I'd love to go through and have a read of what you guys think. And if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button it's completely free costs you nothing and it helps me help support me more than you could ever imagine and uh, if you don't like me in a few weeks time just unsub it's fine but please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video if you do enjoy this let's get into today's video So for Q School to be successful, for me, it has to combine three different aspects. So the first thing is the affordability of the event. It has to be a reasonable price for what you're getting out of it. The second thing is the competitiveness. The competitiveness, it has to be competitive or else there's no point of even going. And number three, it has to be fair. So they're the only three things that I think make up a good Q School. Affordability, competitiveness, and how fair it is. So let's have a look at the Q School just gone compared to those three little components. And we'll start off with affordability. Uh, affordability, £450 to enter Q School. And that is to go in at stage one and play three days of darts. So effectively, you're spending £150 a day to play darts with a chance to get to stage two. Now, a lot of people think that's too expensive. I personally think it's really, really good price. I think they could make it more, more expensive and it would still be fine. Uh, even if it went up to like £600 or like even if you went up to like £750, I feel like people would still go and people who, who are taking the game seriously are still going. The problem with making the price cheaper, if we were to take it down to like £150 um, for the three days, so like £50 a day, then you're going to get so many people turn up and it's going to be too much of like... Uh, a, a ch it's going to be so cheap to the point where people just turn up for the sake of playing darts and it kind of loses its whole um reason for being there so as far as affordability goes i think it's pretty good i think it could be more expensive i think it could be say it as it is i think the affordability of the q school just gone is perfect or at least pretty pretty good so the next thing is the competitiveness how competitive was q school 2023 and i think it was really competitive i think this is probably the one of the most um obvious one of the most easy things to say i think the competitiveness is always going to be good at q school but i think this year it was really really good and i don't think they could have done anything format wise to make this make q school more competitive so as far as competitive goes that was pretty good as well now the last thing is the fairness now this is the only thing that i have a slight issue with and the issue being that there there are a lot of players who don't make it through stage stage one who maybe should that is kind of on them but it's also to do with the draw and then stage two as well a lot of people were there there were there were a lot of players who just kind of got bad draws at the wrong time i mean everyone's there to beat everyone but if you play against one of the if you're one of the top players and you keep drawing top players and top players and top players your chance chances of getting a tour card are going to be lower than if another player keeps drawing players who are lower down players who are averaging in the 70s in the early 80s that's going to make it a lot easier for those to get tour cards compared to you and there's nothing about it that you can do it is just luck and luck isn't fair luck can be fair but for the most part luck's not a fair way of doing doing anything luck luck isn't a fair way of uh, of running a tournament and luck isn't a fair way of getting a fair result at the end of q school so as far as 2023 goes i thought it was pretty good it was very afford very very well priced it was very uh competitive it was wasn't the fairest but I mean, that's just how it goes at the moment. So let's go through a few of my ideas on what I think could potentially make the next year's Q School better. So my first idea to improve Q School would be to implement a seeding system. Now the seeding system will be really, really easy to, to make and really, really easy to follow along and really, really easy to sort of make sense of. The seeding system would be a case of the players who get automatic qualification into stage two would be the seeded players. So they're the players who have either just lost their tour card, finished high up on the development tour rankings or finish high up on the challenge tour rankings so let's say there are eight players who have just lost their tour card they would be seeds one to eight depending on how they finished in the rankings at the end of the last year so for instance 
Uh, Keegan Brown, who finished 65th on the rankings or 66th or something, lost his tour card. He would go into Q School Stage 2 as a seed 1 and then down. So it would start off with the players who have just lost their tour card would be the top 8 or however many seeds there are. Then it would be the Challenge Tour players who have then put in at the uh, the seeds from like 9 till 16 or whatever. Then the Development Tour players who would go in from seeds like 17 to 24. And then it could be the top eight players of stage one q school would fill up the last eight seeds so you'd have 32 seeds this would stop players being drawn against each other really early on or this would stop the the sort of the uh the higher standard players get being drawn against each other early on and potentially make it a little bit more fair so if they did improve a seeding system i think all that would do would improve the fairness and it would potentially improve how competitive the games are so for my second idea would be to get rid of stage one and stage two and just have one stage. Now this could work in a number of ways, but I'm going to go through and sort of explain what I think and why I think this might still work because a lot of people are probably thinking that's how it used to work and they changed it. So why would I want to go back to the old stage? The problem with the old one was it was only four days long. I feel like this year you could definitely make it seven days. You could definitely make it seven days long as one entire stage instead of having a stage one and a stage two. And the reason I think this would work work is because I don't think four days is long enough to realistically get a fair result for every single player. I mean, it's not bad, but I think the more darts that are played, the easier it's going to be and the more realistic the the, uh, the, 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 the best however many players get through to, to, to get a tour card. You could also implement the seeding system that I spoke about earlier for this one as well and have a seeding system the same as the same as the uh, the last idea and it could potentially work really well. I also think there's an argument to get rid of on the day winners as well and just do the whole thing as an order of merit. But that would be my idea. So the only issue I have with this is £450 for seven days worth of Q school. I feel like there'd be a lot of people who just turn up for the sake of it because it's not really that expensive. Seven, £450 for seven days of darts to potentially play like Fallon Sherrick or, or John Henderson or Josh Payne or someone like that. It's not really expensive at all. And I think the price, if this was the system, would have to go up. So at the moment, stage one is essentially £450 for three days, being £150 a day. I think the day rate should stay the same. So I think over seven days, Q School, if it went to a seven-day system like, like how, how I've suggested, should be £1,050. Some people might think that's too expensive, but hey ho that's my thought anyway what that does is it increases the fairness even further and it also keeps up the competitiveness but it does make the price more expensive so you're 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 improving fairness but you're losing affordability and my final idea would be to scrap q school altogether and give tour cards based on challenge tour order of merit only potentially give some development tours and some women's series or whatever but the majority of tour cards should come through just the challenge tour now the problem with this is at the moment the challenge tour is only available to those who have paid their money for q school and if you got rid of q school it'd be available to anyone so my suggestion would be to have the challenge tour as an up upfront fee with no additional fees so let's say so at the moment this year there's 24 challenge tours they're 50 pounds each i think it should be is you should have to pay up front 1200 pounds to play challenge tour you don't pay any other fees you don't pay anything else but if you want to play challenge tour it's 1200 pounds at the start of the year and that's that that way it stops people from turning up early or it stops them from being thousands of people at challenge doors just to play once and then not come again the problem that would arise would be that too many people would turn up on the first few challenge doors they wouldn't be able to cope it wouldn't be fair there'd be a, the standard would be a lot lower so i feel like the only way you could potentially do it on challenge tour only would be to make the people who want to play challenge tour pay everything up front and that would be the way that that would work so the pros and cons here are cons are going to be it's more expensive and it's a little bit less sustainable for the average dart player uh, the pros are going to be it's going to be slightly more competitive because it should weed out a lot of those players who aren't going there for the whole idea of becoming a professional dart player they're going there with the with the intent of of uh, of having fun and having a good weekend and playing some darts while they're there and it also another pro would be that it would make it a lot fairer you're playing 24 darts Arts tournaments over the course of the year to determine which players get a tour card that's the that's an extremely fair way of doing things that's going to give you the best results that's going to give you an idea or the, the best players the best players are going to get going to get tour cards at, at the end of it for sure there's no real argument so this system would improve competitiveness it would improve the fairness but it is going to make it a lot more expensive so guys those are my ideas let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to what you think and yeah thanks for watching the video 
Leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.